Hi guys, how are you? Type A here. Uh, as the title suggests, today I would love to talk about uh, automation for beginners. And I think that Renoise is really powerful in that department uh, because it, it expands upon the idea of not only use the, the graphical automation using every other DAW, you can also automate parameters uh, using the the numerical values in the in the patterns in the metrics and I think that that's really powerful because it enables you to to approach like different com effect commands or the movement of knobs in BSTs that in a way that uh, not other da offer and I think this is really powerful and I the title is automation in the sound design stage because I think that as for automation, this is one of the, especially if you work in like me, like you're doing a lot of things inside the box because I'm not using any hardware, any external source to get my sounds or to process my sounds. And by doing this uh, randomization and using the draw tool to, to draw my shapes, I can I can map things to my keyboard and start playing, grab uh, record some notes and there start messing around with the knobs and normally I I will get sounds that uh, if I were set to to program them it will be kind of hard to me because there's something that's not in my mind and I started. Uh, Okay, the, the sounds and process that I like to show you, I already made it, kind of made it, and I'm going to show you my tricks and some of the tricks that I use. And here in Reactor, Photon as always, my favorite, probably my favorite scene. Uh, we have these digital uh, oscillators, which is like a, a wavetable oscillator that if you could scroll through this symmetry value, it changes the the waveform and if you're playing like a sustained core like a standard core for two bars or whatever you're you're recording if you scroll through this you're going to feel the as the sound changes the waveform but in a snappy way not like a certain wave table way and I've come up with this Okay, this is the sound on his own. Now I've automated, I've automated a lot of the parameters, and it sounds like this. I'm moving the symmetry values in the first oscillator, the second oscillator and the fourth oscillator I'm automating the the filter cutoff of filter 1 and filter 2 and I'm using several ways to do these automations if we go here I'm using uh, I select the, the first 64 lines and process and create exponential curve then I, I select it again and flip the selection to have like it goes up and then goes down. And then I use draw draw feature to draw a curve, a random curve. And finally for the uh, oscillator for symmetry, I use the, the process and create random points feature which is really helpful. And I'm going to explain that a bit more. But uh, in the automation in the in the patterns and I've come up with this sound which is really weird but it has a lot of movement and texture and that's what I'm looking for okay so I rendered this sound and I come up with this sound You kind of hear 
that if you play it uh, different octaves, uh, some of the parts that were really fast, it's, it will sound like like really slow, and then you you are able to hear like a lot of these artifacts and a lot of cool parts that that don't play at normal speed. really cool sound then I use this same sample and I use other trick that I really like as for automation I set the the sound normal pitch this, this sample to hit every second line in a 64 lines pattern then I program the the sample trigger command the s s x x command to hit every second line too, but isolated all. Right click, selection, and click randomize. It will uh, generate a, a random sample trigger command for each of the values that you selected, and you can do it and do it and click randomize again and again, and it will change the values. And this is cool because then you're able to to read the entire sample like this and let us turn off the filter pretty weird the second thing that I did was to put this filter on bandpass mode and if you go here you create another effects line and you right click a value it will create a automation point for for this control the filter will cut off if you go to the last uh, line and you do the same then you select all of this the entire column click selection and interpolate you have three options interpolate linear logarithmic and exponential I always like to do linear because there's no much difference and you have like the same value through all the the entire column and then you can use the same process of randomization to read the the filter cutoff in like this really fast movement harsh automation kind of way that's something I like to do to get this weird like, like, like really fast swaps of filter in the sound then I render this sound to this other again if you play an octave low you're going to hit a lot of the artifacts that I'm trying to get here now using a portion of this sample I created this instrument that you can play because I've liked it and using other portions of the, of the rest of the samples that I've rendered I've, I selected this and this and I created this pattern below using the same approach of interpolate the, the effects commands in the pattern matrix and I've created this which is this really crazy loop of shimmerish and weird plucky sounds pretty atmospheric I've added a multiband compressor to enhance a bit of the height and the mids and then I added a delay which is now is surf now is off this is the, the result with the delay
And finally, I added a fast effects ink reactor, which I really like to use. And this is like a really uh, cool way to, to get a lot of motion and a lot of weirdness in, in a simple loop. This, this, this is a multi-effect unit that I'm always talking about in other videos and it, all of these controls are like off until you enable this the particular unit and I'm going to do that I'm going to do that just now. Basically, you can do the same here. You can uh, map uh, a lot of these enable uh, buttons on your MIDI controller, and then you you start like uh, you put you put the loop on play and record, and you record the on off the not the on off automation that that you're controlling, and it will sound really okay. And if it, if not sound okay, at least you come up with a really long sample that you can cut and you can strut these tiny snippets of really cool samples and this is something I really really like to do because Really, really cool uh, stuff to, to use. And this is really helpful in the sound design stage because normally when you're arranging your track, you only care about volume, like the filter cutoff, but in a way that uh, you're using like to mix sounds or to bring up sounds that start like, like really low volume, then it'll start like going up. And I think that automation in the arrangement part is, is a bit limited. I mean, it's limited in a way that you already come up with the sounds that you like to use and maybe you want to change it to, to create like the the ending of a four bars loop or an eight bar loop like a break with a filter automation or something like that but it's usually like really simple it all comes down to to grab a controller like this and go like simple automation like set a, a beginning loop and then loop and it will go up or maybe it's like a really pronounced way like like a curve like this and it's really simple nothing like oh fancy automation or anything like that but using this raw feature is like really helpful because you can put the the pattern on, on, on playback and uh, in a loop and then you can start drawing and drawing and, until you come up with the sounds that you like or like tiny bits of of the automation that that creates sounds that you like, then you render that uh, sound to a sample and you start processing again and again. And this is like the back and forth that I like about Reno is that in order that I wouldn't think of doing of doing this process.
and I hope you this is like mm, so of some value to you you kind of like <laughs> want to use this process to get your own sounds because I think it's really cool and it'll it sort of break the idea of like you're using a computer and it's not an instrument if you had a MIDI controller use the MIDI controller to control the program because it will like break this barrier of not getting inspiration of usually I have this idea of oh what the fuck I'm worrying of programming the same sounds but when, when I'm doing this I'm always coming up with really different sounds that I wouldn't think of doing myself and I think that's the real value of this randomization in Renoise so hope you enjoy this stay tuned next video is going to be track from scratch 3 continue to working on the track until it's finished peace